Have you ever assumed you knew the answer to solve a problem just to realize that what you've done didn't actually fix anything? <laughs> Been there, done that. My name is Kayla Fahey Arndt and I am a leadership coach. On this channel, I teach all about the behind the scenes of leadership to unveil and pull back the curtain about what it's really like. So today I'm teaching you a brand new skill called A3 Thinking. I'm using my, one of my favorite books called Managing to Learn, which has wonderful examples of what an A3 is. An A3 is just a size of a paper. It's called often called a plan on the page. We're going to talk about how to use this method to really understand what the real true problem is, how to understand and get a feel for what the current state is, what your future ideal state is after you solve the problem, and what is that gap between current state and, and future ideal state, and how do you close that gap with countermeasures. This method is something that I learned when I first became a manager. It's from lean thinking or sort of the Toyota method of manufacturing um, originally. It has its roots there. And this is such a wonderful way to really structure and scope out projects. Sometimes we have problems or projects or things we want to solve and they feel really, really big. And so planning on a page using A3 thinking helps you focus and create a scope about around the project so you can figure out what's actually happening, where do I want to go, what's the gap, but what's the real true root cause of a problem. We've all been there when our boss or we think we should be putting a solution toward a problem only to realize it was just a band-aid and the problem still existed. This is going to help you get to solving the root cause of the issue to have sustainable change and improvement over time. So Join me for this weekly video where I'm going to share all about managing to learn using the A3 method. And I'm going to show you the book, show you the examples of A3s, and also I take some notes for you so that you can visually follow along with me throughout the conversation. Thanks for being here. Let's go. All right, so let's dive in. I want to show you this book. It's called Managing to Learn by John Shook with a forward by Jim Womack. I received this book as a gift from my boss many years ago. It's all about using the A3 management process to solve problems, gain agreement, mentor, and lead. So A3 thinking or the A3 process is a way to problem solve and to learn about what's going on with the current state of the work and then figuring out where's the ideal future state and how do we get there? And it's a strategic process that's methodical that can allow you to have many stakeholders in the process. It can be many projects within one larger project. And so I wanna show you, this book is really cool. It comes with a pocket in the back with actual examples of A3s. So the reason this method's called an A3 is because this size of this paper is an A3 size. So it's a little bit bigger than your standard letter size paper. And you essentially break the paper into two different sides, a left and a right side. The left side is primarily usually all about the current state and the problem. And the right side is all about the future state and how you're going to solve the problem. So I'm going to focus on just like mostly this top left-hand side of the A3 today. If you want to learn more about A3 thinking and this is helpful for you, please comment below and let me know if this is something that you want me to do another video on and I'd be happy to do that. A3 thinking is something that I use every day in my work or many days in my work. I use pieces of this and once you start using this tool, you'll start using just different pieces of this to help you solve problems. So I'll dive into that a little bit more. The structure of an A3 has a title at the top. What's the change or improvement you're talking about? You usually have an owner and a date. Sometimes there's a coach. Sometimes when you're doing A3s, it's helpful to have somebody who's not inside your problem to kind of help you coach like the structure and going through this. Because typically you'd have an A3 that involves many stakeholders. Like I said, it could be multiple people on your team, but sometimes it's just you going through this process. So what's the title? And then the first part is the background. So what are you talking about and why? Kind of what's the purpose or the business reason for this issue? 
what specific thing needs to be improved. So this is where like if you have a specific data metric that needs to be improved, that's what you would put here. So for example, if you're working in the hospital, maybe turnaround times would be something you want to improve or time to room in the ED, something like that. What's the sp strategic, operational, historical, organizational context of the situation? This is just giving a little bit more background, like historically we've done really well with turnaround times. After implementing XYZ, the turnaround times have gotten longer and because of uh, longer turnaround times, we have less patient satisfaction and it has many downstream effects, something like that. Current condition, this is where you talk about like, where are we at today? Where are we at today? So what's the problem or need or the gap in the performance? So we know what the problem is, right? And then this is what we're gonna say, okay, here's the current state. This is the gap. The gap is turnaround time. You wanna get really specific. So how many minutes is it? that you need to improve. This is where you wanna look at your data. What's happening now versus what do you want to ha have happen? And have you been to Gemba? So I've talked about Gemba before on this channel. I'm gonna use the book and show you more about going to Gemba. Um, but Gemba is, have you seen where the real work is happening? Do you know where the what the actual problem is by observing it and seeing it with your eyes or talking with the people doing the work? Any facts or details you have, specific conditions that indicate you have a problem or need, turnaround time, decreased patient satisfaction. These are your indicators or your key performance indicators. This is a really nice place where you can show facts or um, processes using charts or graphs. So this is where I'll show you there's different examples here. So this is Acme Stamping Steering, Lead Time and Inventory reduction project status review. So they have the background saying the stamping division goals require reductions in lead time and inventory time of 25% of this fiscal year. They talk about the value stream was performed and a project was initiated to prove these dimensions targeting full completion by June of 2002. So this is where they map out the current condition with a process map or a, um, a value stream um, map and they talk about it being a push style of operations versus probably something more like a pull style, figuring out what the flow is going to be. This is where a visual tool can come in handy when trying to communicate because you can use these A3s with working with your boss or other folks who you need to have buy-in to help you get any resources needed for the project. This one's a little bit more uh, detailed. You can see it's got like a lot of different steps here. But it has the background, the current condition, and the current state. The previous ones I've showed have been typed up, but a lot of times A3s can be called plan on a page. And so it's perfectly acceptable to take a pen and paper and just draw what's in your mind. Now, this person, I feel like is a really good like cartoonist. This is really good. It doesn't have to be this detailed. It can be super, um, it can be super simple. Um, but this is a great example of somebody who has a more visual mind. Here's something in color where there's like many different data points. Sometimes you're going to have like bar graphs, you're going to have percentages, you're going to have um, different data that you've collected to show you that, hey, sales has increased this much, but we need to improve quality. So we've got like an exponential growth in sales and we need to improve our quality score. So this is really nice as well. And again, this one's a little bit more simple, but again, I think this person's a really good cartoonist. So I want to show you some key concepts from the book, um, as well as sort of write down some notes here as we're going through the book. So I already mentioned a couple concepts I want to make note of so we don't forget about them. So A3 thinking, plan on a page. Now, the first step you want to have is your background and your title. Like, what is it that you're actually focusing on? And something that that example didn't show is that when you have your background, you want to have your problem statement, but you also want to have, so what's your current state, where you want to go. So this is what I like to call your ideal future state. And remember, when you're planning, um, doing project uh, process improvement, project management, all of that, you have an idea of where you want to go. And sometimes when you're solving problems, um, you're going to find like, oh, we changed one thing that affects the ideal future state. So this, this is why I like to say it's ideal because it might change as you're going through the process and that's okay. So you're going to start with your current state, 
and then where you know you or you think you want to go and this is what we like to call the gap and so the idea is how do we close that gap this is what we want to close and so this is what leads me to bringing back this book to show you some information but how do we close the gap a lot of times leaders or managers or supervisors they think they know the problem they jump to solutions right away that's because most people want to be helpful but that's not actually helpful because solutions means you just if you're jumping to solutions that means you're just assuming assuming you know exactly what's going on but we never want to do that so what a better approach would be is to go to what we like to call Gemba so let me show you in the book how they talk about Gemba all right Gemba. I, I like this picture. So this is just a simple stick figure picture, but it's to the Gemba. So it's somebody who has their A3 with someone else who is working on that with them. So somebody who understands what's going on in the actual work. So Gemba is more than a place. This book says Gemba, also spelled G-E-N-B-A with an N, is a Japanese term for the actual place. So Gemba means the actual place where the value creating work happens. So if you think about where does the work happen, if you're in the hospital, maybe you're on a patient care unit, maybe you're a nurse. So trying to improve nursing workflows, you're looking specifically at the medication workflow. Maybe the place where the actual work happens is wherever that nurse is looking at the computer to look at those orders. Maybe it's the Pixis machine. Um, maybe you're talking to pharmacy. Maybe you're looking at the Epic order sets or whatever um, electronic health record you have. So this is where the actual work goes. And in Japanese terms, the, these terms kind of created, came out of manufacturing. So A3 thinking, lean thinking, um, all kind of stem from like the Toyota model of thinking and improving work. And so they talk about the shop floor, the manufacturing places being where the work happens. But in our case, it can be anywhere. You know, if you're in the lab, it's on the bench where the work is happening. So going to Gemba is, is your first real, um, the first real step you need to do to develop your current state. So Gemba is going to help you identify this. Never try to make assumptions. You could try to like bullet point out what you think the current state is, but you need to talk to people who are doing the actual work look at the actual work, observe the actual work, and see what's going on. So why do you have to have, or why do you want to have current state? Why can't we just start, you know, thinking about solutions? And the reason is, if you have a current state, you know your current state, you have a current standard. Um, you have a, actually, let's, let's say that before we've done the problem process improvement, this is your original standard. If you know where you're starting from, you know where you want to go, and then you can make improvements from there. If you don't know where you're starting, how do you know that the countermeasures that you're implementing are going to raise your standard? You have nothing to measure it against. So that's why you want to spend a really, the majority of your time when you're creating your A3 should really be on this current state to really, really get a good grasp of what is it, where are we at, and where does that differ from where we want to go? Once you understand the problem and the current state, that's when you can start to scope out the project and create some countermeasures. So I'll talk more about that. But you can see here, if you have the original standard, once you make an improvement, improvement through raising standards, through solving problems, over time, your original standard becomes a new standard and that becomes your current standard. And then the next standard, you can either raise it, maintain, or it'll go down. So again, this helps you allow you to measure the standard, know what the standard is, and be able to improve upon it over time. Something I wanted to mention when it comes to going again by understanding current state um, is that once you have, so you have your current standard, I'm going to just show this. I like this visual. So let's just say this is your current standard, but if you improve, you raise that standard this becomes your new standard. And over time, this becomes your new standard. That's how continuous improvement happens. So I just think that's a really nice visual for us to remember is that that's why you want to spend the majority of your time focusing on what is your current state. Once you have this information, the current state, you've gone to Gemba, you kind of know what your gap is, 
You also want to make sure that when you're looking at your problem statement, you keep the scope something that feels like attainable. So just I just want to remind you to be aware of like the scope of the project. We talk about scope creep where it's like, ooh, we could solve this problem. We could solve this problem. This part of the process is part of a larger process that we know needs fixing. Um, I would say just be mindful and talk. Be really specific about what's in scope and what's out scope out of scope. Okay, so you've got your title, your background, you've scoped the project, you know your problem, you know your current state and your ideal future state. So I want to show you when you're talking about the problem, sometimes it feels really large. You've got your current state and you're like, where do I even start? And so when you're going to Gemba, when you're scoping out your current state, you can think about it as a funnel. Because what you want to do is get down to the root cause of the problem. Sometimes we put in solutions that feel just like band-aids and we never actually solve or get down to the root cause. So what we want to do is think about like, what's the perception or how do we think about the problem? What's the actual problem? You want to clarify the problem by figuring out what's the real problem. And that's where going to Gemba and understanding the work is so helpful. Now this is showing the process called the five whys which is where you start out with one problem or what we think the problem is and we ask why. And then we keep asking why, usually five times or even seven times, will get us down to like the root cause of the problem. And the root cause is where you wanna spend time figuring out countermeasures or things you can do to close the gap to get you from current state to ideal future state. So for example, if I thought my problem was um, we just have way too much work in our processing area and we can just never get anything done. And that's why our turnaround times are so bad. Then you would say, okay, well, why do we have so much work? And then we can say, oh, okay, well, we closed a hospital and we started sending specimens to this hospital, our, our hospital. Why? Oh, uh, well, once we did that, um, then we... Uh, we, we were we didn't even have a process to think about how do we bring in and add those samples to a new workflow. Why? Well, we were so busy that we just sort of said, like, here's what we think is going to work, and we went with it. Why? We never created a standard or a procedure about it. Why? We didn't have time to train our people. Okay, so you can, you know, if I was going to go through that situation, I'd think more about it. I have a bit more spelled out. I'd be not by myself. I would have my team with me and we'd be talking about it. But you can see why at the end of the day, it's like we just don't have enough time. There's so much work to do. And therefore, we're not meeting our turnaround time or key performance indicator expectations. But really, the root cause is we don't have a standard or a procedure or training for how to handle these specimens. So what you could do is your countermeasure might be create a standard, create a procedure, train the people, and then see what happens. So I want you to know that the first thing you identify in your Gemba, that might feel like the surface level issue, but you want to start asking why at least five times to clarify what is the root cause and how do we get to the real issue so we can have countermeasures. The last thing I want to talk about are the countermeasures, and I've used the word countermeasure and solution. So I love how the book talks about this. So I talked about how when you jump to solutions, you're assuming. And I don't want to say solution is a bad word, but I think solution can often feel like, um, like, okay, I solved the problem. It's done. It's closed. But like I said, when you're going from current state to ideal future state, things are going to change. And so countermeasure is the word that we prefer when we're talking about solutions because countermeasure implies that this is directed at current state. And like I said, once you make improvements over time, your current state is gonna change, okay? So that means that over time, we might have new countermeasures or different countermeasures, right? So we've never really, we've maybe solve for one part of it, but then something changed. So countermeasure is just a way to be really, um, just be really specific about, okay, like this is something directed against one of the issues we found when we were trying to solve our problem. So if we use that example of too many, too much work to be done and haven't really figured out how to get it done, 
we identified that our perception was there's just too much work and we're not meeting our turnaround times. And we asked why. We did the five whys. And over time, we came up with there's no standard. There's no training. Can't spell. There we go. There's no training and there's no procedure. So once we know these things, that's our these can be like three different countermeasures to solving this issue. So you might look at this issue and be like, oh, we just need less work or we need to divvy up the work. But in reality, maybe we just need a process for how to handle that work. And that came from doing the five whys and the planning on a page. So I hope this video helped you learn a little bit more about A3 thinking. I would highly recommend this book, Managing to Learn. It's very much like a workbook. The chapters are easy to read. They have little stories and vignettes about somebody going to Gemba and doing this project. And again, they come with these wonderful plan on a page examples with the one that is really helpful that is the actual template of what goes on each page. Um, if you like this information, let me know and I'll, I'll actually try to do a real life plan on the page for you and we can talk more about how I use this tool every day specifically in my work. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hoped these skills helped you. If you enjoyed this video, please check out more of my videos that are linked here, or you can visit my website at kfaconsulting.org. Otherwise, we'll see you on Instagram at kfaconsulting. Take care, and until next time, be a light.